two days on this chapter, so I'm not going to go too fast. You can read half of it tonight, half of it tomorrow night. You got only a couple more chances to get to make up quiz grades, so you need to do well. Um, we're talking about biomes in chapter 61. What is a biome? A biome is an area where there's a certain type of plant and animals can be found. The desert is an example of a biome that has certain types of plants and animals. The rainforest is an example of a biome that has certain types of plants and animals. There are a whole bunch of different biomes on this planet. There's not only desert and rainforest, but there's deciduous forest, and there's tundra, and there's taiga, there's coniferous forest. There's grasslands. We're going to learn about all these different types. There's also aquatic biomes, like saltwater biome, and freshwater biome, and marsh, estuary, coral reef. These are called aquatic biomes. We're going to learn about those this chapter, too. Are you excited about biomes? Yeah, really excited. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Now, one, one question that you should understand that people have is why are there a whole bunch of different biomes? Why not are the whole planet just the same? One of the reasons is temperature. At the equator, it's hotter than at the poles. You might wonder why this is. Imagine my hand is energy from the sun. Energy from the sun comes from a long ways away. You know how, how far the sun is away from the Earth? 96 million miles. Very nice. 93 million miles. It's really close. And sun comes in from, uh, energy comes in from the sun, and it hits directly on the equator. A whole bunch of energy coming in focused. But at the poles, since the Earth is round, the energy gets spread out. And the same amount of energy covers a lot more area at the poles. So all this energy concentrated and focused at the equator and spread out at the poles makes it so it's colder at the poles. So that leaves us with three different areas. We have tropical, where it's hot. We have temperate, where it's medium. And we have arctic, where it's cold. Tropical. Temperate, Arctic. Tropical, temperate, Arctic. Arctic. On both sides. Arctic, temperate, tropical. Arctic, temperate, tropical. Wow, way to switch it up. So, hey, Mr. Willis. You got to know that. Mr. Willis. <laughs> you just like, do really people great. live in Antarctica? There are scientists there. Go ask them. Uh, how do you live there? They have, um, uh, they build right on top of the ice. They build, um, huts and stuff, and... But they have to go to the grocery store. No, no, they get everything shipped in. Do people actually live in igloos? Yeah. Are, like, yeah, are Eskimos the, real? That's the Eskimos in the store near the North Pole. Wait, don't you're Santa Claus? What? Yeah. I just want you to know that Santa Claus is. Up in Norway. All right, let's move on. Hey, quiet, please. Now, another thing you need to know is that not the rainfall is different in different areas of the globe. Rainfall is caused by a number of factors. Most of the rain comes from the ocean, and rain can be moved around. The the clouds and the weather patterns can be moved around by um, different. Uh, types of wind, you have the trade winds, you have the jet stream, um, you have uh, all sorts of different weather patterns. La Nina. Um, yep, yeah, La Nina, El Nino. He's right. I'm sorry, I don't know what. Okay. This uh, picture here, you need to understand um, that as air rises, this shows a mountain range. This causing the air to, to rise coming off the ocean. The, the air coming off the ocean has a lot of water on it. If it hits um, 
mountains, it'll rise and, and the air will cool as it goes up. And the water falls out of the air as it cools and you get a lot of rain on what we call the windward side of the mountain. And then the air comes over and it doesn't have any moisture left in it. It's all rained out. So dry air comes down the other side. And you can get desert conditions on one side of the mountain and very wet conditions on the other side. So we call that a rain shadow. Rain Have you ever heard of that? No. It rains on this side, but no rain on this side. So the, 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 uh, the mountain has act, act as, a, as a force that ends up changing the uh, biome the way the plants and animals grow on either side of the uh, of the mountain. So the mountain's kind of like an equator. A little bit. Let's talk about the equator. Since it's hotter at the equator, have y'all ever heard that warm air rises? Maybe you've studied that in physical science. Since it's hotter at the equator, the the hot air rises when it gets high up it cools and drops its moisture. So you have a whole lot of rainfall at the equator. Then that air that's dry, because it's dropped all of its rain, goes northward and southward and falls back down. And when it comes back down to the land surface at about 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north latitudes, it has dropped all its moisture at the equator, so when it comes back down, it's real dry. And that's where all the deserts on the planet are. They're at about 30 degrees latitude. So the, the air heats up at the equator, rises, rains, there's a lot of rain at the equator, and then it comes back down at about 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, and it causes deserts in those locations. And then curls back around and picks up more water and gets back to the equator. So there's a system of weather that's kind of a circular weather pattern that, that goes like this and like this and causes rainfall and dry areas of the planet. And that's one reason we have different biomes. Yeah. Yes. So here is a look at a graph that you need to make sense of. I'm going to ask you some questions about it right now. This shows average temperature on the bottom of the graph. And the hotter you get as you go to the right, it's, it's hotter. This is in degrees Celsius. So up here at about 30 degrees Celsius, that's about the hottest average temperature that you'll run into. And down here at minus 10 Celsius, that's about the lowest average temperature you'll run into. So on this side of the graph is annual precipitation. That's the amount of rainfall. At the bottom is zero rainfall. And at the top is 400 centimeters of rainfall a year. It's a lot of rainfall. 10 points, if you can tell me what kind of biome you have if there's high temperature and high rainfall, according to this graph. 10 points, if you and your partners can answer. If it's high temperature and high rainfall, what type of biome is it? You can look at it. Don't shout it out. Write it down. Yeah, I have it, but... High temperature, high rainfall. What kind of biome? You made me ask questions like this on the test. Green, correct. Do you mind taking your head? High temperature and high rainfall according to this graph. Dude, I can't use it. What's that called? Yes, pink got it. What? Good boy, Sharu. Purple got, got it. Good work, Sharu. I'm not having two touchpads. Good boy. That's like, it's hard. Orange got it. <laughs> so, Ruth, I think this is your mic. Are y'all talking about Do you agree? Yellow, correct? Anyone else? No? It's the tropical rainforest. Check it out. High temperature, 
high precipitation. Look at that. That's what you get a tropical rainforest. Okay, let me ask you two more questions. Ten points if you can tell me what you get if you have low temperature, low rainfall, and what you get if you have medium temperature, medium rainfall. Yeah. Low temperature, low rainfall, medium temperature, medium rainfall, according to that graph. And then dust to juice forest. Uh, How would you say that? Okay. Okay. Can't stop. Two answers. Look at the graph. Low temperature, low rainfall. What is it? And medium temperature, medium rainfall, what is it? Yes, orange got them both. I feel like if... Yes, green got them both. If you were to do that. Anyone else? Yeah. Ow. And Meredith. Welcome to Pink. Pink got them both. Hey. Yes. <laughs> yes. Purple got them both. Yellow? I have like a hand shaky problem. Yellow got them both. Shaking everywhere. So, low temperature, low rainfall is tundra. Medium temperature, medium rainfall, that's deciduous forest. So, this is what we're going to do now. We're going to go through and talk about each one of these. I mean, do you know what a savanna Daddy, is? He's cutting your hair. Do you know what a boreal forest is? Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, oh what? Oh. I do. It's light. So I know what all this is. Dude, stop. Is what? Here's a couple of the types. Listen. Listen. Do you have a seat for me, Jeff? <laughs> My turn. Grace up here. This shows some of the plants that you find in the desert. They're adapted for living at high temperature, low rainfall. Wherever there's high temperature, low rainfall, you get a certain type of plant. That plant has to store water, like the cactus, or this is, an, this is a leaf of an aloe vera plant. And they can store water in their leaves. They're called succulent plants. And they, they usually have thick stems or leaves and have a bunch of water stored in there. So, if you look all over the country, there are various biomes, all over the world, there are various biomes at different locations. So, the light colored, the kind of light blue here or gray, that's called tundra. We'll learn about that first. Now we'll talk about this red, it's called boreal forest. The green is temperate deciduous forest. We'll talk about that next. And then you have some grasslands in blue here. You have deserts in orange. Savannah is in yellow here. We're going to talk about all that next. And there's the tropical rainforest. There's more tropical rainforest there and there. We'll go over all these. You ready for this? Oh yeah. First type is called tundra. You may have heard of the frozen tundra. Oh yeah. Tundra is an area that's in the far north. Again, we see it up here, northern Canada, Alaska, northern um, uh, Asia, um, parts of Greenland and Iceland. In these places, the soil is frozen for most, uh, for all year long. There's a little bit on top that's not frozen, but if you dig down about a foot, you'll hit frozen soil. It's called permafrost. Even in the summer. Even in the summer. In the summer. And you can't, you can't even put a shovel through it. It's really hard. It, it, it's like this floor. If you tried to put a shovel through the floor, you just couldn't do it. And it doesn't allow growth of any trees. Trees need deep roots. 
and the, the, the topsoil above the permafrost is only about that thick. So all you get that grows there are grasses, and they only grow in the middle of the summer. In the fall and winter and spring, it's too cold, there's snow on the ground, and you don't have any growth at all. Most of the creatures that live in the tundra migrate. Caribou and things like that come in in the summer and eat the grasses, and, and then they leave. Same with insects. They come in in the summer, they live, they eat grass, re reproduce, but then they leave when the winter comes around. Insects? Yeah, insects. Like, like you heard bugs, of them? Like bugs? Yeah. You want to see video footage of the tundra? Heck yeah. Video footage of the tundra. Can you get the light for me up there, Avery? Watch Just to the south of the polar ice cap lies the tundra. This harsh environment is the home of caribou. Caribou graze on plants during the summer and on lichens in the winter. Polar bears live near the Arctic Ocean. They hunt seals and other animals for food. What about the boreal forest? I can imagine a multiple choice question that says, which of the following biomes have permafrost? A, tundra, B, boreal forest, C, savanna, D, deciduous forest. The answer is tundra. The answer is tundra. What the answer is. Miss Rose, can you find the letter, was it? Yes. Wait, what is it? C? No. A. So, yeah. let me tell you about a boreal forest. It's also called taiga. It's also called northern coniferous forest. Yes. Do you think that's pretty good? I'll take it a tutorial, though. And, quiet place. Put the phones away. And these, uh, this boreal forest does not have permafrost soil. So that the soil isn't frozen so that trees can grow and dig their roots down deep. And almost all the trees have evolved um, needles. Ashley, you with me up here? Yes. Up here. Almost all the trees have evolved needles. It's like pine trees and spruce trees, fir trees, all the types of trees you see when you go skiing. These are all in the boreal forests. They have cones for reproduction. And they uh, um, grow slowly, uh, but they grow constantly because they keep their needles year round. And um, it's most of the wood on the planet is located in these boreal forests. Look how much area they take up. Most of Canada is boreal forest. Much of Asia is boreal forest. So it's a lot, it's a lot of territory. And the uh, tree farmers will go out there and cut down the trees and, and make wood products out of them. And there's a lot of export of wood from these areas. get a lot of insects and birds. There's no amphibians or reptiles. It's too cold for them. None. I love reptiles. Too cold for amphibians and reptiles, but uh, you got lots of mammals that live up there. Bears, moose. Um, they're all around in the forest. Video footage? The taiga, or northern coniferous forest, lies just south of the tundra and is characterized by large forests of spruce, fir, and pine trees. The dense shade provided by the evergreen trees prevents the growth of plants on the forest floor. The coniferous forests of the taiga are a major source of lumber around the world. Two members of the deer family, moose and elk, are common inhabitants of the taiga. Moose are found in northern forests worldwide while elk are found only in North America, west of the Rocky Mountains. It's, most of it's forest, but there are like clearings in areas that uh, allow growth. Let's talk about deciduous forests. This is where we are right now. 
We're in the temperate deciduous forest. Now, deciduous means that it loses its leaves every year. These types of uh, trees that we have, beech, maple, oak, hickory, they drop their leaves in the winter. And you can see where this is located, up uh, the green parts. Eastern United States, much of Europe, a lot of China. Um, that's deciduous forest. They drop their leaves. That's the main thing you got to understand about deciduous forests. They drop their leaves every year. Um, and uh, they do that to avoid the snow. So one thing you can do is you can evolve needles, and the needles will shed snow loads. But the other thing you can do is evolve real wide, fat leaves that when it snows, you don't want those leaves because the snow will build up on the leaves and break the branches. So the trees will grow these nice fat leaves all year, and then when it starts to get cold, they just drop them. And the leaves fall to the forest floor and decompose there on the forest floor, and the tree pulls up a lot of the nutrients back up through its roots. So even when a leaf falls, it's not lost forever from the tree. The tree can get back much of that nutrition. Are you all with me, Maddie? Yes. And so the deciduous leaves just fall off the trees. And then the, the tree is sitting there. It looks dead, but it's not. It's alive. It's waiting until after the snowfall. And when spring comes around, it'll grow new leaves and start doing photosynthesis again. Isn't that a cool way to live? I love spring. Video footage. Spring. Temperate deciduous forests originally covered eastern North America, Europe, Japan, Australia, and South America. The dominant tree species in these forests include beech, maple, oak, and hickory. They are noted for losing their leaves each year before the cold winter months. Raccoons are nocturnal and appear to wash their food before eating. Deer and fox are other common inhabitants of northern deciduous forests. Then you have grasslands. Well, we have a lot of grassland here in the United States. Let me show you where it is. All the blue area here is grassland. There's a lot here in Asia, too. And some grassland down here. That's, this is where the best soil is. One thing about grassland is it has great soil. Look at the soil quality, excellent. Why is that? It's because the grass grows, and grasses don't live that long. So they grow, and they die, and they decompose. They decompose very quickly, and their nutrients go back into the soil. So the best soil, this is a test question, the best soil in the world is in grasslands. And that's why farmers choose a grassland to grow crops on. If you just cut the grass, that's easy enough to do. Then you can plant crops. And uh, most of the food in the world comes from the grasslands. Yes. So, soil quality is good. If you're an animal and you're living in the grassland, there's not much cover there. If you're going to hide, guess what you, where, where you're going to hide? The ground. Yes, and holes in the ground. But a lot of the animals that live here hide in holes in the ground. Unless you're at the top of the food chain, then you're usually kind of a big animal that can defend itself. A lot of grazing animals here um, in the grasslands, like bison, um, that sort of thing. Um, in, in, in Australia, they have kangaroos running around in their grass. Video footage of grasslands. Grasslands are typically found in the interiors of continents. These lands provide a natural pasture for herds of grazing animals such as bison and antelope. The soils of grasslands are very fertile due to the growth and decay of many plants. Burrowing animals such as prairie dogs, rabbits, and gophers are common in temperate grasslands. So that's the 
grassland. Excellent soil quality in grasslands. Now, chaparral is kind of like bushland instead of grassland. You see a lot of bushes everywhere. And they have chaparral, if you've ever been out in California, and kind of seen what it looks like out there. There's not enough rainfall in chaparral to grow trees, and all you can grow is bushes. And that's kind of the same thing in grasslands. Grasslands don't have enough rainfall to support trees. So you get a lot of grasses grow, but trees need a whole lot of rain, and there's just not enough in grasslands to support trees. Chaparral is the same way. There's even less rainfall in chaparral. And you'll get a lot of just bare area and then a bush, and more bare area and then a bush. Um, a lot of uh, birds, insects. You'll see a bunch of lizards and stuff running around when you go to the chaparral. Since there's not much, there's not a lot of growth, you don't get great soil. It's usually pretty hot. And kind of arid. Do you know that word arid? Dry. Dry. Pretty dry. Hot and dry. Gets a bunch of bushes around. Now the driest of all, the most arid, is the desert. Very little rainfall in the desert. Um, you do have some plants and cactuses and that sort of thing, but they're all adapted to the dry conditions. A lot of them are called dry deciduous. They drop their leaves when it gets too hot, instead of drop their leaves when, when the winter comes around. The plants, whenever there is a little bit of rain, they soak it up, they grow some leaves, they do some photosynthesis, and then they'll drop their leaves when it gets too, too hot or too dry. A lot of them are very slow growing. Cactuses grow slowly. A big cactus, like you see on, you know, the big, what are they, saguaro cactuses? They kind of look like this. Those things, takes them hundreds of years to get big like that. They just start, start off really small. They start off really small, yeah. I have a cactus plant. A desert is a region that receives less than 25 centimeters of rain a year. Vegetation in deserts is sparse and consists of cacti, sagebrush, and other plants with adaptations to hot, dry conditions. Reptiles such as snakes and lizards are common in deserts. These animals have a thick waterproof skin and excrete dry waste materials, which help conserve water. You know, there are a lot of reptiles in the desert that never drink any water their entire life. What? They never drink water. The only water they have in their bodies is from water of metabolism. When they eat something, like when they eat a little, a little bug or something, the mitochondria will make water from the glucose, the sugar that's that's in the animal, that is in the insect they just ate. So they never have to drink water. They have thick skin that keeps the water in. They're real good at that. And then lastly for today, the tropical rainforest. This is found in, uh, near the equator. It has lots of trees. It's got the most, the high, highest temperatures, the most water. You have the most organisms that can be supported on the planet living in the tropical rainforest. There's a lot of growth. And there is different levels. Some organisms live on the forest floor. Some organisms live way up in the canopy, jumping around at the tops of the trees. And even living on the trees, on the sides of the trees, it's not just bark. The trees are usually covered with plants that are living on the trees. We call them epiphytes. And it's a plant living stuck to a tree. So you have kind of a medium area. And there's a bunch of insects and stuff living there. Um, and so there's all sorts of life going on. It's, uh, it's the most diversity on the planet 
you can see biodiversity is very high. That means there's a whole bunch of different types of living things in the rainforest. We're having a problem because the rainforests are being cut down pretty quickly. You usually find rainforests in areas of the world that are kind of poor. And what people will do, they want to grow crops, they'll cut down rainforests and plant crops. And we see that the rainforests are kind of being cut down pretty quickly, and we're losing these rainforests, which is too bad because there's a whole lot of diversity there. The widest diversity of life forms in the world can be found in the tropical rainforests that exist in areas near the equator. The vegetation in these forests is extremely thick due to the more than 200 centimeters of rain these areas receive annually. The animal life of a rainforest includes three-toed sloths that move slowly and silently through the canopy and hang upside down from the branches with their long hook-like claws. Monkeys swing easily from tree to tree searching for fruits and seeds. Jaguars prowl the forest floor in search of a small mammal for a meal. Saru, did you have rainforest near where you live? In Thailand? No? I thought there was some rainforest there. It's kind of outside the city. You were in the city, weren't you? Yeah. Um, if you ever get a chance, visit the rainforest. I went to uh, Ecuador. 